numerical derivative under math, if you if you use it a lot, I guess you'll realize that you can just go up and it'll come up the bottom of the menu instead a little quicker. If you wanted to calculate, let's get rid of all that other stuff. If you wanted to calculate the derivative of a function, you can put numerical derivative of something. Why don't we do the one that we just did there? Absolute value, because we know the answer. You could do the, the numerical derivative of absolute value of x. The only silly thing is here, you, you gotta put the, you gotta put a comma. You have to tell it what the variable is. The comma's right above the seven. The, the silly thing is here, you have to put, you can't just do numerical derivative of absolute value of x. You gotta tell it that the variable in that expression is x. That'll become more obvious later why that's true. Because sometimes you might want to do the derivative of one thing where the variable is another function, not just x. But you have to tell it that the variable is x. You also have to tell it what else probably do I have to tell it? Yeah, where I want, right? So at what did we just do? The, the value at 2, what's the slope at 2? 1, right? Equals one, right? That's what you'd expect it to be. What happened? What? This? That? I don't know. That's just. This, it's cool. It probably means that the graphics thing's not as good as it should be. But if you want the slope now at a different point, like negative two point one, it gives us negative one. If you tell it it to calculate it at zero, remember that. This is a good guess as to what it's doing. Oh, if you go second entry above the enter button, it scrolls back through the last 10 things you've entered. More than 10? Oh, for the 84, maybe it's more than 10. Oh, plus. Okay, what calculator is doing then is it's doing this. It could do this, but it does this. One is slightly better than the other. We set up the, we, when we wrote the equation over the expression for the derivative, we used this, right? But we didn't just calculate that. What did we do to get the actual derivative? Yeah, we did the limit of this as h approaches zero. The calculator can't do that. We could take the limit of this as h approach 0. And there's a mistake in this one, actually. What should it be? 2h. It should be 2h, and I want you to understand why it should be 2h. Well, something like it was on the test. It was a higher level question at that point, right? It was both of them could represent the derivative. Yeah, both of these can represent the derivative. If you drew a picture of this, we need to, uh, do I have to push the chatter button again? If you had some kind of a function here and you had some points, if you had a point here that's called A, and A plus H isn't necessarily on the right side of it, it could be on the left side, it doesn't matter, right? But if I, if I take this point and move it closer, that's what we're doing. Notice one of the points is moving. If I take the limit as h approaches 0, I'm pushing the, the point so that they're right together, right? You're moving this so that it's the same point. If I do this one over here, I have some kind of a curve again. I have some point right here, but I'm instead of taking one point on one side and moving it closer, and there's no way I can do this together here, but I'm moving this closer and this one closer at the same time like they're collapsing in on the same point, that would still give me the derivative. It's just that if I was, if I have to calculate everything by hand and do all the algebra, this is a lot more tedious to work with, right? Because you know how you have to, you know, if we're doing x cubed and then we have to do x plus h cubed, that's enough of a pain to do. You don't want to also do x minus h cubed. It's just more work like that, especially if you can't write a 3 properly the way I just did. So that's why we use this for the derivative. You just you approach it from one side, and 
doing this when we do the when we do the limit here. I know I seem to always write the point on this side, but this is the two-sided limit, so really it has to work from both sides. Since the calculator is not actually doing the limit, I want you to think about which one of those is better. And I, I told you which one's better, but I want you to think about why it's better. Again, make sure you've made this correction here. This is supposed to be 2H. That's my problem because I copied and pasted. Yeah, and it has to do with this, right? We are For this one, we're starting, we're saying this is A, and we're going to take a point on one side or the other and call it A plus H. If we're calculating the slope of this, if we're estimating, this is for estimating the derivative, right? If we don't do the limit, it's just an estimate of what the derivative is. If we do the limit, then it is the derivative. All the calculator is doing then is saying, what's the slope between those two points? It's going to make this like a and a plus point zero 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 one or something. It's going to use a really small number, so in most cases, if it's a nice smooth curve, it's going to be a pretty good guess, but it doesn't actually push the points right together. If this was a really sharp turn here, and I should uh, I should actually use uh, that program instead here. If it does if it does a small enough h value, I'll say it again because now it started. <laughs> if it does a small enough h value, then that's going to be a pretty good estimate, right? If you make them close enough together, the green line's almost the same as the red line. If the, cat, if, the, if the function is going up like that, the green line is going to be slightly more than what it should be, right? If I was to go on this side of it, the green line is going to be slightly less. The reason the calculator does that symmetric difference quotient is it puts one on each side. In most cases, that's going to give you the best estimate. Can you see? I know you can't really see the green and the red there, but... If I go on both sides of it, it's actually, most cases, a better estimate. You could come up with functions where that's not true, of course, but if you do a point on either side, it's a good guess for what it is, especially if you know the calculator goes really close to the point. It's estimating the actual derivative by using two points close by. So this is what this would be doing, and if I set this up where both points could collapse onto there, then that would be better. Maybe we'll make that for after lunch or something. Yay. Do we do we understand this here now? We'll go back to our writing. Too many things open. Now I'm all in the wrong place. <laughs>